More Place was in deep trouble when I first arrived. Oh, fuck it, man. The dining room was empty. Where is everybody? And the food was shocking. That's a Yorkshire pudding. That is a pile of shit. I had to deal with possibly the worst waiter in the world. Oh, Zach, I'm fucked. A crazy Frenchman. You're being a little fucker again. <laughs> and a chef obsessed with deep fat fryers. If Mark hangs on again about the justification to why I should accept that he cooks 99% of his food in a fucking deep fat fryer, I'll put one up his ass sideways. Isha in the home counties. Full of stockbrokers, ladies who lunch, and golfers. 35,000 rounds of golf are played every year on Isha's More Plays golf course. That should be more than enough to keep the attached restaurant full. But none of the golfers ever go, nor does anyone else. I have just a week to turn the place around, and that's a tall order. Jesus Christ, a mighty monstrosity. Um, first impressions, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll turn it into an open prison for young offenders, because it looks fucking ghastly. I think this could be my toughest job yet. I've come to try out the food. More purple. Everywhere. But the place is deserted. Looks like I'm dining alone. Not a good sign. God knows what they're going to serve me. The camembert? Deep fried camembert. Have I gone back in time? Dear Lord, for the... We're about to receive. May I not be poisoned for the fourth time in four months? Amen. Jesus. It reminds me of rancid fish fingers. That's disgusting. Thank God I've got some wine to wash it down. God, dear, oh dear. It absolutely stinks. It's caught. Where is everybody? Still. At least I can be sure no one's watching me. Mm. Next up, huge, huge duck a l'orange. I have gone back in time. It's the culinary equivalent of flared trousers. Is the meal all right, then? Mm. This duck tastes like it grew up in the 1970s. It's not exactly fucking tender. Is it popular, the dish, duck a l'orange? Not really. No. Have a little taste. <laughs> it's quite tough, no? That's really difficult to eat, mm. yeah. I oh, know. You sure always spit out? <laughs> no. Are you going to swallow? No, I some ramen. It's water. <laughs> it's still in there. Mm hmm. You're still chewing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Don't swallow it. <laughs> Horrible food. No wonder this place is in trouble. It's completely clueless but on the verge of being embarrassing. Hmm. So what do you think about your meal tonight? En anglais or français? En anglais. I'm lost for words. Almost. Merde. Well, at least I wasn't poisoned. So I've come back to meet the owners of this 1970s nightmare. Richard, Richard, how Try to be nice. Huge place. Richard Hodgson and Nick Whitehouse have sunk all their money into this place, and it's been a disaster. It's like an old country house hotel, isn't it? Like a... well, historically, it was someone's house. This empty room will be costing them nearly £100 an hour for staff and overheads. Well, your potential is it's fantastic. It's got character. Yeah. It used to be a successful Bernie Inn in the days when steaks were posh. They used to do 200, 250 covers a day here, valet parking. It was, it was probably, probably the last time it took his real money, it was wasn't probably it? probably the only restaurant on the high street. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Aren't they ashamed to be still serving the same food from the Bernie Inn days? And who's got the food background? I mean, who grew up? Neither of us two. No, no, no. <laughs> our background's drink. Um, right. I spent 15 years in the licence trade. Richard sacrificed everything to buy this place. If I can't help him, his family could be homeless. I should have done this in my 20s when I didn't have children and didn't have uh, a huge mortgage and, and everything else. We both sat there and thought, shall we do it, shan't we do it, and a few dark nights when we thought maybe it's a bit risky and there's a lot of risk involved for us both. Nick's put everything he's got into the business as well. Running a restaurant is completely different from selling drinks. 
No wonder the kitchen is such a nightmare. I hope the best. Hervé was a French head chef when they took over. But no one liked his cooking, including me. We gave people some shocking experiences, I think it's safe to say. Well, we, we taught them what the extremes were like. People can be quite emotional about food and you've ruined my life, that type of thing. I know how they feel. Um, engine room, kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. Let's everybody. meet the rest of the kitchen team. And Mark Robinson. Mark Robinson calls himself the executive chef, whatever that means. So you were head chef somewhere else before you came here? I trained as a chef and then um, I became very disillusioned and went off and got an IT and business degree. Gave up cooking for a business degree. Doesn't sound very passionate about food to me. He was brought in to sort things out, but all he's done is spend thousands of pounds on microwaves and fryers and piss Hervé off. Come on, stroppy Frenchman. <laughs> Hervé, aujourd'hui, vous êtes responsable pour quel poste là? Euh, un de partout. Good. And he said he doesn't like you. <laughs> there are two people in the dining room. Let's see if their lunch is as bad as my dinner. Almost everything seems to be deep fried, and the oil smells like it hasn't been changed for months. When you walk through the restaurant, the first thing you can smell is like a um, tainted sort of... Fried smell. Fried smell. Yeah. Almost a little bit like hospital food. Yes. Chef, why is there an anchovy fillet? Is it the salad de soise? It's like kind of salad de soise, but it's their own. How many new potatoes around? Uh, only one. One new potato? Yeah. Fucking hell, for £9.50. Any olives? Uh, no. Nothing's ready here. No beans cooked, no eggs cooked. What the fuck is going on? Or are we just in the shit because we've got two customers for lunch? This kitchen is a nightmare. Mark was brought in to update the food. But I can't see what he's done. How can he get away with a menu like this? And how would you, um, how would you describe the style, the food? Um, it's um, the, 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 the a la carte stuff that we do. It's very, um, it's very much Here's a steak and three sauces you can have with it. It's not a great, it's not a massive detraction for what they were serving before here. And three sauces are what? Uh, brandy and mushroom, stilton and bacon, and a peppercorn. Jesus. Those three um, sauces sound a little bit Bernie Nish. Well, they are. I mean, this is the thing. It's a bit, it's a bit 1976. You can say that again. A little nuke sauce. Straight out the microwave. Stilton and mushroom. It's an insult to cooking. Oh, in a bag. Damn. No wonder we need so many fucking microwaves. Hervé? Thank fuck I'm not hungry. Sorry. Parsley? Hey, come on, we'll be the same without parsley. Come on, get it on there. There you go. Good old Bernie. I know you love your parsley. And so far, they need a fucking rocket up their ass because if they continue the way they are doing now, it's gonna go down like a sack of shit. And quite frankly, I don't think they actually care about customers. And every dining room needs to care about customers. Otherwise, they don't come fucking back. It's my second day in Isha, where I'm trying to help the Moore Place Restaurant and Golf Club. The food's stuck in the 70s. Mm, Bista. As usual, there are no customers. Today, how many's booked for lunch? None. Nothing. And tonight? None. So... But we did have someone come in to look at the restaurant. It's either here or TGI's. Fucking hell. I'd rather go to TGI's. Mark Robertson, the executive chef, should be tearing his hair out. But he's taking the day off. But you look different out your whites. You look like a monk on leave. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to play golf later. Fancy <laughs> oh, around. Going to play golf. We're supposed to be running an empty restaurant to get it off the ground, to get it moving towards something semi-decent. Not fucking around on a golf course. At least he knows there's something wrong because he's hired a new head chef. Now there are three. Talk about too many cooks. One's a joke Frenchman. The other's stuck in the 70s. I hope Andy Trowell's from the 21st century. You've really got your work cut out there. I know. And you I can't know. go in with all guns blazing, booting them all in the ghoulies within the first 24 hours. You'll have no one left. I know, I know. How would you how would you play this situation? Narrow the menu down to yeah. begin with. Yeah. Start off really simple. Yeah. Um, and, and, and look what's going on locally. Andy looks promising. But I'll have to show him what he's up against. What is that, Andy? Huh? It looks like something out of the night. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Jesus, painful, right, painful. It's like a 
dehydrated silicon implant. Actually, it's a microwave frozen deep fried burger. What is that? This is a salad. Looks like a plate of worms. Kind of breaks my heart when I see this shit, you know that. No, mate, do you think that's nice? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. And he's worked at some really good places. He's going to need all his experience. I know. I know it's instantly some bolognese sauce in a jar. They don't use that, though, do they? I wouldn't like to we'll, say. We'll ask uh, our executive chef, Mark, on that French one. Dressing. He's as shocked as I am by all this ready-made packet of food. Lazy cooking, it and it's more expensive yeah. than making it fresh. And you smell that. That's what the smell is downstairs yeah. in the dining room. Yeah. Mm, I mean, on a Sunday, I bet you can smell it all over the building. Jesus Christ, right down each your street. <laughs> no wonder there's no fucking customers. Hervé. Yes. You're being a little fucker again. <laughs> How can we have a Frenchman here and we're buying French dressing in? Little fucker. <laughs> I'm impressed so far with Andy. No, he seems keen to make changes. And this? Sorry. Yeah, this is what I want to get away this from. Is... And they put it on the menu as Brussels pate or Brussels something. Brussels with chicken. Yeah, it's just plastic crap. Yeah. No, they're definitely left on the burning <laughs> in. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Frozen Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Andy could be the chef I've been looking for, and that means I can get out of the kitchen and work with the owners. It looks like a deceased bridge club. Why spend £10,000 painting the building a horrible colour and nothing on improving the food? The reason for doing it was to show people that the place had changed and that it was very different. Yeah. At night, though, we lighted up with purple lighting. It looks fantastic. Very, very but it has probably alienated some of our old core business. Most important thing is to focus on the food and get the food up to where it should be, what we should be offering local, uh, how we should be um, selling the food mm -hmm. um, and, and, and bringing in a bit, of a bit of a bargain. I'm taking Richard down the high street to find out where his ex-customers are eating. I can't believe how close together all the restaurants are. Yeah, really, really On one high together. street. Isha's made up of wealthy city types, ladies at lunch, and surprisingly, thousands of Americans who work for a big conglomerate in the area. And um, red peppers. Yeah, it's absolutely packed in there. Yeah. It was just ladies there. That's you drinking champagne. Yeah, spend per head. Um, lunch. Uh, 15, 15, 20 quid. 15, 20 quid, but it's churning all the time, you know. There's a good example there. Yeah, very good. Richard's a businessman, and I want him to see how much money these places are taking. There are 23 restaurants on the high street, so competition is fierce. But I bet most people don't even know there's a restaurant at Moore Place. Quick challenge. I'm going to ask a family. I'm going to stop them and say, have you heard of more Place? Yeah. Do you know what it is? Do you know where it is? Um, Come and try us for lunch. Have you heard of more Place? No? Yeah. Have you heard of more Place? Not. You haven't. Have you heard of more Place? Yeah, I've heard Up the road there. Have you been? Have you used the place before? No, I don't like the cabin of it. You don't? You don't like... <laughs> it strikes you as being an eyesore. Another purple building there. It's a funeral director. <laughs> you didn't copy that, did you? <laughs> well, more Place? Yes. Well, before they painted it, um, a strange colour. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not a fan <laughs> of the colour? No. If we paint it differently tomorrow, would you come back next week? Yeah. There they go. I'm going to give you... I'll get two brushes, you can have one of them and I'll have the other. <laughs> so, in a survey on the colour... <laughs> I think this trip's opened his eyes to the potential of his own restaurant. And it's given me an idea for the new menu. The plan is to give the restaurant a new direction and get people talking about more place. Now, you know, the deep fried shit has to go, and um, ah. the parsley around the plates and the chopped tomato, and that, that, that's fucking 70s crap at its best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gordon, um, I have no desire to spend the rest of my working day smelling of fat. There's, there's you know, thousands of Americans that live locally that um, is a, the most amazing market to tap mm, into. Right. There's no reason why you can't have, not an American-themed restaurant, but an American influence, but get the place famous for two or three dishes. Sure. When someone's driving past, they said, oh, Christ, look, there's more place. You know, they've got the best burger in Isha. Yeah. Who gives a shit? It's a talk point, whether it's the best burger or whether it's the best chowder. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But as usual, Mark has a problem. My concern is how that would go down with um, any of the older clientele that we've got that come in. OK, is, it, is that keeping the business afloat? Well, no, no. No, there you go. No disrespect. Yeah, I've gone into restaurants before where everyone's been nervous about the existing old yeah. farty, boring <laughs> bastards that sit there yeah. and take a two-week holiday in between courses and, and dribble throughout. <laughs> the Viagra coming with a coffee. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> we're looking for new, vibrant, young, exciting customers that are going to be loyal to this place for the next ten years. Sure. Can we fuck off in the kitchen now? Yes? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> hell. Stay focused, One Direction, American-style cafe, upbeat, friendly service, bloody good food, um, and stick to it. 
And if Mark bangs on again about the justification to why I should accept that he cooks 99% of his food in a fucking deep fat fryer and to why they spent, what, £12,500 on six fucking microwaves, I'll put one up his arse sideways. Uh, why don't we do a couple of burgers up for uh, Richard and Nick? My organic burger, made with totally fresh ingredients, is miles away from Mark's deep fried crap. Nothing wrong with a burger when it's done like this. Lovely. Oh. Hervé, welcome to proper cooking. And it's cheaper to make than bought-in silicon implants. Tomato chutney. It's a nice, raw cherry tomato chutney with shallots. I put a little bit of parmesan on, toast them. The celebration burger. Lovely. So far, Nick and Richard have shown little interest in the food they're serving. What's the verdict? That's that fantastic. Is. That's Absolutely awesome. brilliant. And that is just, that's the talking point, that is. I ate at more place and the burgers are awesome. You've got to go there and have one. Fresh, meaty, isn't it? Just... And because Great. burgers are traditionally so badly done, what an opportunity to really excel. I can almost see them counting the money they could make with my American theme. Burgers and corned beef hash, pecan pie, peach melba and smoked haddock chowder. The most important thing about this particular soup is, is that, you know, it's done up in the morning. Clam chowder made up, we're using potatoes, the clam juice to thicken it. We've gone a little step further and poached some quail's eggs. And then pour the chowder over the haddock, over the clams. The quail eggs still nice and runny inside. That's lovely. And you take a spoon and you think, oh, fuck it up. Mm. That's moorish. The food is really coming together. This is the corned beef hash with hollandaise finished with pomeroy mustard. Not difficult at all. Difficult at all. Exception. I really not. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Now all we need is some customers. 35,000 golfers use this place every bloody year. You know that? Yeah. And there's a small percentage of them actually get in to that bloody restaurant through there. So the idea now is going around there, stalking them a little bit on the green, and ask them to taste this amazing food. I'm taking Kim, one of the waitresses, and Andy to entice them in with the food. Morning, sir. How you doing? Would you like a quick burger? Yes. Sir, there we Thank are. Thank you very much. What in the, what's this in aid of? Uh, this is in aid of Andy. I'm he's a in new chef in the restaurant at Moor Place. Are you? We haven't used it. I haven't been in that place for oh. three years, four years, John. I used to come down this on a Sunday, and we booked a breakfast, and we had a tea booked. And they just took so long to get the breakfast out. Really? That's interesting. Well, our, we, had, we had to tee off and had to leave the breakfast, and I ain't been in there since. <laughs> Nick and Richard can't keep an empty restaurant going forever. We have to fill the dining room and make customers come back. This is a beautiful uh, mini hamburger. Your wife's going to go mad now. Look, you put it all down your jumper. <laughs> I wonder how many of these golfers are ex customers. Toast the brand in it. Yeah. Just trying to get uh, people into the restaurant, trying yeah. my good food. Is there a theme to your menu? Chowder. Um, Great burgers, corned beef hash, mm. uh, beautiful roasts, yeah. um, knickerbocker glories. Mm. Would you come back to the restaurant? Oh, certainly would. Thank you very much. Uh, there are three days of the year when all restaurants, however bad, are full. New Year's Eve, Valentine's night and Mother's Day. What are you doing on Mother's Day? That's a good point. It's Mother's Day this Sunday and it could be make or break for more place. Three down, 34,997 to go. Hopefully, we've enticed some disgruntled customers back and made some new converts. My next task, to sort out the waiters. It's Friday night, and time is running out for practising on customers. All nine of them. It's Andy's night off, and so Mark's running the kitchen. Yeah, I just want them squared up straight. To, you know, I mean, I'm Peter, not it's not square. It just square them up. So why is he in the dining room? I just want them straight. Tonight, I want to see if the waiters can push the new menu. On a bed of spinach topped with a fried egg. Oh, well, that's, that sounds right. great, actually. It is nice. I tried it I've yesterday. Changed, I've changed yeah. my mind already. Well done, Kim. One corned beef hash. Less butter than the spinach next time. OK, quick. Smoke had of chow, which is a soup. It's with the, with the, with the, uh, Come on, Peter. He's got haddock fish, he's got, he's got, uh, what was that egg? <laughs> it was... Quiles egg? No, the customers know more than him. Can I have the camembert? Two of those, please. Oh, God, they've ordered the camembert. That's it, please, that's it. Just okay. You 
Zach looks so shy. I'm not sure he can walk and talk at the same time. Never mind sell the new menu. There you go. That's it. How was your start to It's a bit cool. Now things are going wrong in the kitchen as well. Mark can't even make the deep fried camembert. It's frozen. And I thought it was his speciality. Thank you, two more. Better. Yeah, I mean, it's melting, but they're full of fat now. If it's under ripe cheese, then it's going to be a lot harder to get running. Yeah. Even if you cook it from frozen, it's never going to go running because it's not ripe. Now the chef's gone into the dining room. That's pretty much one member of staff for every two customers. And there are no vegetables in the main course. And they need my help to serve them. How are they ever going to manage with more than nine customers? Uh, everything they've touched so far on see me. Fucking overcooked, undercooked, unripened, deep fried camembert. And, um, no I'm really worried. This dining room will be full on Sunday. There could be as many as 150 customers. We don't stand a chance. And if it continues to go like it is now, there'll be more fucking camembert inside the pot plants. Shocking. I mean, really fucking shocking. Dining room. Absolutely crucial. We can't do without you, and you can't do without us. And we've got to establish that teamwork, and we've got to come together as a team, and think together as a team, and then never forget the most important person is the customer. So it's a very straightforward exercise. Nick and I are going to arrive in the dining room for the first time. We've got a table booked for 1.30 for lunch today. Ready? Sit me down, present the menu, and sell me this restaurant. Here we go. Peter's been here for 15 years, so he should know what he's doing. Good Hello. afternoon. Uh, hi, Mr. Whitehurst, nice to see you. Mr. Ramsey, <laughs> long time to see you. I've got a nice table for you. Yeah. Well, you can't fault his enthusiasm. Still a sparkling for both of you? Sparkling for me. Sparkling. Um, I'll have a beer, actually. Just Kim's been a waitress for five years. Yeah. Yeah, She's charming, yeah, a, but has no real yeah. training. A beer, bitter. Bitter. OK. The lamb, perhaps? Lamb, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too positive. Zach's only been here a week. He knows nothing. Really nothing. Where's it from, the lamb? I'm not too sure. OK. Um, oh, soup of the day. Soup What's of the that? day. I'm not too sure either, I'm sorry. Uh, and may I have some water, please? Still sparkling. Yes, yeah, still. Please. Still. Uh, what's it, fresh or...? Fresh or...? Oh, God. <laughs> fresh or from the pond on the ninth green. <laughs> I would like you all to taste. They have less than 48 hours to master the new menu and be able to sell it to the customers. Mm. It seems like it's got bits of mussels in it. It's mm -hmm. not actual fish, is it? I'm not sure. Right. It's seafood. Yeah, it's, it's in his seafood soup. It's got, it's got some white fish there. It's got uh -huh. cockles, cockles, cockles. This is going to be harder than the kitchen. I used to work as a waiter, and I'm sure I can show them how it's done. Smoked haddock chowder. Beautiful, creamy soup, garnished with flakes of oat smoked haddock, finished with a wonderful poached quail egg. So, uh, nice beef chowder. Beef chowder, definitely not. We also have a special on today, clam chowder. The chowder. The chowder is a very nice uh, platter. Uh, it's a very nice taste. Platter? No, platter, no. Nice, short, descriptive idea of the special. Clam chowder, very strong tasting. I'm turning fucking grey. I have to read the menu, go through the menu and what... Well, I'll, give, I'll give the menu to you. There you go. OK, hold on a minute, let me just see what we got. Last time. Sharp tasting, got a special twist to it as we put a quail's egg in it. A quail's egg in it. Much better. Quail's egg in it, really good. Even my pubes are going grey. Garnished with the uh, oaks of haddock, flake, I'm sorry, garnished with... <laughs> Can you cook? No. <laughs> this whole thing is theatre. And this restaurant has to become a showcase. And each and every customer is going to eat in here on Sunday, gearing up for a bloody busy day, has to remember you. Yes. And if they remember you and we serve good food, boy, are they going to come back. And, and one last chance for Zach. Here we go. Right. I'm ready. This one I can feel in my bones. I can see how relaxed you are. You're looking good, you're cool, you're dude. Bam! Give it to me. The, the smoked haddock chowder is a very nice dish. Um, it has a nice creamy, fishy, garnished with flakes and a nice uh, smoked haddock in the middle. <laughs> it's been selling like hotcakes. It would be funny if it wasn't for Mother's Day. Oh, shit. We've only had like two days to prepare, though, so it's like... Oh, fucking hell, you got two days to prepare one fucking speech. I've got 24 hours to get a fucking ration ready. Zach. Zach! I'm more than halfway through my time at Moore Place. The food's better, the waiters have improved, but without any customers, it's all a bit pointless. Okay. 
There are three days of the year when every ration should be full, even purple ones. New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. And Sunday is Mother's Day. Richard and Nick have been taking bookings, trying to claw back some money. Table plan. Good news is what? We've got 11 booked. <laughs> no, we've got quite a bit more than that, but... Hit me with it. 181. Shit! Confirmed. I should be pleased, but I'm terrified. I thought we'd struggle with 150, but 181? Yeah, it's making me feel worried slightly. A bit ambitious? A bit ambitious, yeah. Mm. But just, you know, what we're trying to do and turn this place around... He's trying to taking get up a division, in. yeah, and yeah. getting customers in here. But and what worries me is that you know they're still not turned on. I think they've bitten off more than they can chew with the amount of covers they want to do. Mm. I'm as worried as Andy, but I have an idea: roast chicken, just like your mother used to make, but with a twist, carved at the table to take pressure off the kitchen. You've cut a chicken before? <laughs> no. You've cut a chicken before? No. You've cut a chicken before? Many, many years ago. Many, many years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Rich? At home, of course. Home. Everyone's going to learn, so, including the owners. One chicken each. JC, you thought you were coming down here for a round of golf. No, you're not. I want you to do a chicken. Perfect. Ready? Yeah. I've brought in JC, one of my best maitre d's. He knows everything there is to know about service and about carving a chicken. But that's, I mean, one, one of the so classic uh, cutting we, we do. First, cut off the legs. Then separate the drumstick from the thigh. Next, cut along the breastbone. Keep the knife close to the carcass and take off the breast. I will, I will leave the skin myself, yeah. I think it's nice also to leave the skin and the customer can do what, what he wants, yeah. So we do one breast, one, one leg. Turn the chicken over and remove the succulent oyster underneath. That's a nice little piece of meat. Voilà. What are you doing on Sunday? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm selected. So, £400. <laughs> £4.50 an hour. No, no, we'll push the boats out this time. 475 4 7 Man's got talents. Come on. Time for everyone to practice. First time for you? First time for me. Yeah? Chicken virgin. Fork up the arse. Fork up the arse. <laughs> Which is the arse? <laughs> the legs are first. And then you go onto the breast. The chicken has to be carved in three minutes, or the rest of the food will have gone cold. It doesn't really look like a chicken. It doesn't look Trust like a bit of bone. And you cut the leg beautifully. You cut the drum off. You've got the thigh there. Yeah, look, that's so right. They're, they're, that's done brilliant. <laughs> just, you're just having problems with the breast. Yeah. Tomorrow they'll have to carve in front of the customers, and it'll have to look better than this. We've got some shredded and cat food here. <laughs> It's like the fucking fox is a tactic. <laughs> the chickens are coming on, and it'll be so nice to have chickens carved at the table and, yeah, and getting sure. the waiters to take some pressure Brilliant. off our fucking shoulders on Sunday with gratin dauphinoise in a bowl yeah. on Lovely. the table. Yeah, yeah. Um, fresh peas, because it's just coming yeah. to season. Yeah, perfect. And yeah. so that's the major selling point yeah, yeah, for the dining room. Yeah. Yeah. And pecan and pie. Instead of being positive about Mother's Day, Melba. Mark's yeah. worrying about old customers who are expecting the 1970s menu he's already sent out. The people that have booked have seen this. Yeah. Yeah, as long as they know they're going to get the beef, lamb, chicken. The same graces. They may have seen the menu, but they haven't fucking tasted it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's one big fucking relief for me straight away. I really want Mark to be right behind the changes. In respect to how many we got booked, we're going to be in the shit big time. Yeah. And if we can entice 25% of these customers on Sunday to return, you know... Well, we've got them. Yeah, you've got them. The simple truth is that Nick and Richard have got greedy and overbooked. They have to learn to care for their customers. Do you think you're both now capable of running a restaurant? As you've said before, and as we've not made any bones about, we're not food experts, we're not restaurant operators. I think we need to be in here. Mm -hmm. Certainly in the short to medium term, we need to keep to building our capability. If you are going to go a division and take it from strength to strength, you have to get firmer. Mm. I have to do it every day. Mm. Because there's a part of me that thinks, Christ, you nasty bastard. And now that you guys are physically hands-on, I mean, really hands-on, it'd be so good to keep control of it hold tight to those fucking reins. If Richard and Nick are serious about getting stuck in, we could still get through Mother's Day. I'm going to take them at their word and give them some real work to do. I really wish I could repaint the building for tomorrow, but at least I can do something about the inside. The minute you walk in here, the first thing you look at is the Christ, all of the entrance. A little bit disoriented because you're confused to where the restaurant is. At the moment, the customers are in danger of getting lost on the way into the dining room. Yeah, walk through. Down to the right. And then when you come into here, it's such a lovely area here. And what I was thinking, see all these plants that side there? Yeah. 
Let's get this over here. A little bit of screen. Yeah. Here, maybe one of those little Indian screens sectioned off, and it just gives a nice, smooth, flow clear through, yeah. flow through. Yeah. If you don't catch them, they often feel they often mill around here. Yes. Yeah. Like it's almost a barrier. Disorientated. Yeah. Come through this door. Walk in. First thing you see, horrible plastic coat round. So the area outside the restaurant is just as important as inside. Very warm. It's even more intriguing now than it is when you walk through to the. No, no, thing. Wow, beautiful entrance. Excellent. Where's the restaurant? Oh, it's just down here onto the right. There's that natural little follow snake. Follow. Yeah, you can follow. Everything is ready for Mother's Day. Just one last test to see if Richard can carve the chicken in less than three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> How are you feeling? <laughs> Have you started? No, not yet. No, no. <laughs> How am I feeling? Yeah. Overwhelmed. Well, we started. <laughs> Look at that. It's smart. Have you been practising? Only, only at home. Every, only <laughs> every hour of every minute of every day. One minute to go. <laughs> He's done it. Richard's ready to face his customers. Can you be four Two minutes, 20. Well done. <clears throat> Can I just say that we've got 50 roast chickens for tomorrow to sell? Fucking that out. Let me think. That's 100 legs that could go into <laughs> someone's lap, isn't it? <laughs> Morning, guys. The big day has arrived. And if we're going to give the diners a Mother's Day to remember, we'd better get cracking. Andy, how many chickens are going in? Six chickens down that, down that oven there. I've got a chicken in there, and then I've got that whole tray of chickens here. As well as roast chicken, Andy's cooking a ribeye beef with all the trimmings. And Hervé, he's in charge of the Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> Hervé! You cannot make Yorkshire pudding like this. Fucking hell. Not exactly how your mother made them. They're like bullets. Maybe you have to cook them longer as well. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and hotter to start off with, just to get them rising. Morning. Oh, you got 15 chickens. It'd be nice if you could do 10 of them. What, me personally? Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> I'm going to start to think about chicken. <laughs> OK, here we go, Rebecca. Yorkshire puddings. Whee! What do you reckon? 50-50. Fingers crossed. If my Yorkshire pudding's rise, the kitchen will be almost ready. OK, Peter. Just one last pep talk for the waiters. I just want you to stop crashing around, move around the dining room like a ballerina. And see that wonderful <laughs> floor out there? You just treat that like it's Swan Lake, gliding <laughs> in and out of all the tables. If we get this right, more plays will really take off. If not, we'll offend half the mothers in Isha. Oh, we shouldn't be under this pressure on fucking Mother's Day. Quick look. OK, uh, just stay there two seconds. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Like, no, 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 no. Does it get out of where you're blown on them, knocking them down? Look at everybody standing here, away from my fucking yoga. Fuck off out of here! <laughs> oh, fucking hell! One more look, one more look. Just in case I was imagining things. No, Ready? No, no. Watch. Ready? Watch. Ready? 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 Yeah. Look, that's what I'm trying to explain. That's a Yorkshire pudding. That's a pile of shit. Yes? Right, where's that French little fucker? Come here. Hervé! End of story. OK, 50 minutes to go. First table's arriving at 12 o'clock. Quarter two. Um, yeah. Andy, do you want to leave from the kitchen? Yeah. OK. Um, starters, smoked haddock chowder. There's a creamy fish soup garnished with oak smoked haddock, main courses, roast chicken, carved at the table. That's down to you guys. Make Push it. the chicken. Traditional roast beef. With Yorkshire puddings. Yorkshire puddings. A la Herve. Oh, Herve. Christ, when you think this time last week, we went from two to 180 for lunch today. So I'm going to be in the dining room 
right behind them, give them a little bit of support, because I think the kitchen's pretty much set, we're there, but the dining room's still a little bit apprehensive. Bookings have been staggered over two sittings, so we'll be working for six hours straight. Use this one for the peas. After Zach's performance with the chowder, I've put him on bar duty. You want to die, okay? Kim, Nick, Richard and Peter will work in the floor. And he's in charge of the kitchen with Hervé as his right-hand man. You've got three minutes, Hervé, yeah? How many is it? Four. How many is the chicken? Four. Four. And the executive four. chef? Well, yeah, he's in charge of crockery. OK, you've got three chowder bowls up there. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Mother's Day. More place burger. It's a big beef burger with a charred grilled bun. And it tastes brilliant. <laughs> it will do Nick the world of good to meet some customers. The burgers are selling well, but at the moment, not enough chicken. If just two or three of you want the chicken, and we'll bring it out to your table and call it for you at the table. How come you're not selling the chicken, huh? It's not one to try. Go on, we want to go for a break. <laughs> <laughs> they actually sell one chicken. The rest of the dining room will start to see the sort of little bit of excitement, a little bit of magic happening around the table. So they'll all start ordering, which then, within an hour, will run out, which is exactly what we need. Now there's a nice buzz coming out of the room. It sounds really happy. Here he comes. Give it to me. Four chicken. Chicken for four. Well done, well done, big boy. Four roast chicken. After all my doubts, it's Peter who sold the first chicken. Spring chicken. Well, that's not you then. Sure enough, soon everyone wants one. It's a mutant chicken. My goodness me. What's the idea of doing it at the table? Oh, yeah. to get the chicken made a bit of chicken. Quite a lot of chicken. How do you feel about having a chicken car on the table? Yeah, Difference? Makes you feel a bit more hungry. Can't find the knuckle. Right, think of the drumstick. What's that bit? I've never seen that in there before. <laughs> that looks nice. Do you want a bit of each? Yeah, that's fine. Relax. It's only a chicken. Everybody's rising to the occasion, and the first sitting's going really well. <laughs> Take two. It's great to see the dining room full and feel the buzz. Oh, thank you so much. Lovely. But on the second sitting, the overbooking's causing a problem. There are just too many people. There's a table of 19 and a table of 15 and a 14, pretty much coming at the same time. And it's not very good when you've got, like, 48 people all at once because it's shafted the kitchen. <laughs> Nick and Richard have to learn a cardinal rule. Put the customers first, make them feel really special, and build a sense of loyalty. Well, I don't expect to come out for a family meal and have to wait as long as this. It's not a question of fast food, it's a question now we've been here an hour and a half and we've had a starter. That's it. Not having a lot of explanation other than we've been really busy. Yeah. <laughs> we've kept cheerful, haven't we? Except for Colin. Still, there we are, we learn and we don't come back again. That's it. <laughs> have you ever had a chicken carved at your table? No. Well, I've not done this many times. Kim's trying her best, but charming the customers just won't work. They want to eat. At least you know it's fresh, though. <laughs> another bottle we'll of wine. Another, another bottle of wine, please. Another bottle of wine. Remember, unhappy customers destroy reputations. I mean, how the fuck can you cook for nearly 50 people at one time? Yeah? The food was very good. Yeah. The rest of it, the it's structure, the organisation. I'm oh, sorry, mate, you know, it doesn't happen. Perhaps the more waiting staff, apart from, I mean, the girl's the girl. done her best, yeah, but, you know, yeah. she's the only one on her own. The guys in the black shirts and yeah. everything that were the managers, yeah. they were sitting down talking to their mates in the conservatory there, and they only left two people serving everybody else in I mean, here. I'd like to say goodbye, but, but we're still waiting. We're still waiting to pay the bill. <laughs> Let's hope Richard and Nick learn their lesson. The dining room's empty now, but it's been full for the first time in a long time. And the vast majority of customers went away happy. One chicken left. OK, Ave. Bravo. Well done. Thank you. Yes? Happy? Yeah, it's good working with Andy. Yeah? Will you use my recipe for Yorkshire puddings? I'm a bloody French. I know I you're the bloody French. I, I know. I don't do Yorkshire puddings. 
Don't know, mind you, for the last minute. Thank Everyone you, everyone. everyone's matches. Oh, come on, we got to the end of the day. We've got to have some fisticuffs before no, it goes. Everyone performed in the kitchen. Even Mark. It wouldn't be right. It's an easy target at the end of the day. Oh, Mark's not an easy target. Yeah, I am. You know, you said earlier, didn't I you? You've got a lot of material to no, work with. I just love it when you put that executive chef before your name. Hey, did I? Hey. Oh, did I? And the waiters did a great job. I'm really impressed with the way everyone pulled together. <laughs> that was fantastic. And you were running around crazy today, like proud cock. Wow, this is full. <laughs> this is heaving, this is buzzing. Right. Hey, I'm running Those it. And happy as Larry. Since we started, we've never had a day like we've had today in here. One complaint was the fact that the food was taking too long, and the rest of the complaints were just customers still not happy with that bloody colour. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that purple monstrosity. <laughs> huh? And you know what? A quarter to 12, lunchtime, I didn't think you were going to do it, because I didn't think any of you were good enough to do it. <laughs> Fucking well done. Huh? <laughs> Maybe there's hope for the Purple Palace yet. When I first arrived at Mort Place, I found a restaurant in crisis. Where is everybody? It felt more like a rest home. Today, how many booked for lunch? None. Nothing. The food was deep fried, microwaved, or out of a packet. That's fucking 70s crap at its best. Too many cooks, and not one of them any good. Are they? Thank fuck, I'm not hungry. And I met possibly the worst waiter in the world. Oh, Zach, I'm fucked. I mean, really fucking shocking. But by the end of the week, things had started to improve. That was in March 2004. Now I'm back. Oh, for God's sake. They've still kept it purple. And on a sunny day, it still looks like a shithole. Jesus Christ. It's a relief to find out Andy's still heading up the kitchen. How are you? How are you doing? All right. Good to see you. Yeah. You look like you've had a busy summer. Well, yeah, it's getting out of hand. The Ramsey burger. <laughs> that wasn't a Ramsey burger. <laughs> um, how many are we selling a day? Oh, we're doing 80 kilos of beef mince a week. 80 kilos a week? My God. It really kicked off in a big way. How do they take care of the old puddings? <laughs> hey, how are they? Yeah, it's better than yours. Well, they're better than mine. I'm, I'm happy. Hey, I'm here to be beaten, Hervé, you French fucker. <laughs> well, do me a favour. Make me one. Morning. Morning. Are you well? Very well, you? Sir? Uh, yeah, I was until I arrived. It's still purple. It's still purple. It's about priorities, isn't it? You know, we've, we've, we've continued to spend money here on, uh, on things, and it's, it's on the list at some stage. Bullshit. Yes. Um, but if you remember the last, you know, chat we had, the dynamics of getting the restaurant busy was the sort of objective sure. behind this yeah, whole sure. thing. And that was, so, that was doing the set menu and dropping the price down, and then yeah. since then, it's probably settled in at 60 70% higher than it was before. And Mark's the gardener now, is that right? Where Mark's is he? up in Leicester, he's running his own pub. So now he's an executive barman. <laughs> We've really given Andy his head, haven't we, in terms of the menu and let him get on with it. The one thing I would say, categorically, the food here is great. Isn't it? The product yeah. is great. But the proof is in the pudding. Hello, here's your ah. Yorkshire pudding. Excellent. Um, that looks nice, uh, Hervé. Hervé at least seems to have improved on that flat pancake he made me last time I was here. Mm. It's not bad, Hervé, you know that. It's actually not bad. It's a little bit too thick at the bottom. It needs more salt. Do it. Do it. <laughs> 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 okay, chef. Better than yours? Of course, it's fucking not. <laughs> Don't get that fucking excited. Hervé is the only original brigade member left, but Andy seems to have succeeded in knocking a brand new team into shape pretty quickly. Front of house still has the charming Peter. How are you doing? Zach's been moved to the safest place. Behind the bar. How's this one had a clam chowder? Uh, well, we don't do anyone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I knew they'd be on their best behaviour for me, so to get a genuine overview on how more place has progressed, two weeks ago I sent in a spy. Very cheery service from the old fellow in an open neck shirt, black Matthew Ford is a renowned food they critic. Seem to be on excellent terms with the mostly codgerish lunch. Hello, Matthew. His frank reviews have made and broken many businesses. <laughs> Joe! And he came away with some strong opinions about the Purple Palace. Overall impressions? Were they informative on the menu? There was an old, the old codger who was... Uh, yes. There, there. He was absolutely... He was sweet, he was very nice to my daughter, he was very informative, he was clearly taking pleasure in all he was doing. And um, style of food? Um, 
Um, modern European, I would say, and really very competently done. It was working some well-known combinations. Mm -hmm. Every now and then it just gets a bit too fancy, and I think maybe to justify the, you know, the dining room. There was deep-fried rocket, which I thought was a bit mm. weird. What the fuck would you want to deep-fry it for? You ask me, I would. I, would I'm just, I was just a restaurant critic. I wouldn't know like these things. You know what goes on in chefs' heads, frankly, is a mystery to all, frequently to themselves. Nine bag. Deep fried rocket. Was that your idea? Yeah. No. No, it was mine. But I've changed it now. Andy. Beet, beetroot crisps. Deep fried rocket's gone, has it? It's gone. It's gone. Dan was going to ask for that for lunch. And it's all gone. Talking about lunch, I'm going to have a. Where are the menus? Let's have a look at the menus, and um, I can order them. I'm starving. Despite his rocket abomination, Andy has definitely had a beneficial effect on the food here. So why, if they're doing a booming trade in the evening, are lunchtime still completely dead? Looking at the bar menu, I've got a good inkling why. Good afternoon. You're really ready to order, sir. I'll start off with a vegetable spring roll, please. Vegetable spring roll. Spring rolls? Yes, sir. Three little words spring to mind. Deep fried food. If a restaurant wants to get a good reputation, the food has to be consistently good throughout. Here we go. There you go, you can taste that one. They look frozen. Um, I'm not very keen on them. They're fucking disgusting. Mm. It's like a cremated turd. They're fucking disgusting. Mm. Miles away. So we've got good food at the restaurant. And it's completely spoiled by the shit they're serving in the bar. And if you're ever going to attract people from the bar to come and eat in your restaurant, you've got to stop serving that shit. Full stop. Sad. Service! The deep fried rubbish on the Moore Place bar menu is in danger of completely undermining its new hard fought reputation. Service! When you've got such diverse menus, it's going from sort of first division straight down to the fourth. Two dishes on the bar menu is more expensive than your lunch menu. And the food on the lunch menu is 10 times more exciting than the food in the bar. I want to suggest incorporating more of the restaurant menu into the bar, slowly but properly. Mm -hmm. So anyone coming in for a quick snack, whatever it happens to be, is an indication to how good it is in there. For me, if, if, it, if it helps the consistency and it helps the speed of delivery, mm -hmm. then um, it's no gamble. Yeah. No more deep fat food. No more. And just to make sure, I'm putting the deep fat fryer out of harm's way. Shit! The food on the evening menu is a huge contrast. The waiting staff can take pride in what they're selling. That is some of our homemade chips. For the same price. <laughs> Richard and Nick have wisely cut prices. The result? Surprise, surprise. The average spend per head has gone up from a meager 13 pounds to over 20 quid. And if business continues at this level, their predicted annual turnover would have increased by nearly a million pounds. Everyone loves a Ramsey burger. <laughs> fantastic. The place is doing really well. Very, very busy. We got rid of the fucking fryers, which is fantastic news. And it's a great restaurant. Food looks fantastic. They don't need any more. I'm out of here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. Cheers. But remember one thing. I'll be fucking back. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait.